2023 Toyota Sienna hybrid minivan. We got the family loaded up. We're heading actually over to Miami for this video to test out the fuel economy, just the everyday livability of this minivan. So let's get into it. <laughs> But first, let's start with the exterior design. We got 20 inch wheels on here that look pretty sporty. And this is the XSE grade. So it is the sportiest grade that they have. It has a unique front end compared to the rest of the Sienna's. A little bit larger grille. I don't, I don't mind it. I think it looks pretty good. So let's come around to the other side. Of course, we have the blue Toyota hybrid badge. They've been doing that for a long time. Lexus has gotten rid of that. Uh, recently, but Toyota still keeps the blue inside the badge. We have the blacked out mirrors. We have the roof rack. Interestingly, we don't have a blacked out window surround. It's still chrome, even though it's the sport model. At the bottom, we not only have this pretty glossy black strip, but you kick under and it's a game changer when you have things in your hands. You have a bunch of kiddos with you. It's amazing to have this feature. You can also close the door with that. So we'll get in there in a little bit, but let's go ahead and get in the cargo. Let's keep kicking our way through the minivan. Black Dot Sienna logo on the back. We have a sport exclusive rear bumper here as well. Tons of cargo capacity. We also have a, a household plug in here for about 1500 watts. We have the kiddos in the back seat, so I won't be able to show you what it's like to fold down. Just know that these seats are really light, a lot easier to fold down than our 2013, for example. And let's go ahead and close this down. Bye, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Bye kids. All right, and let's open this up again. This time I'm just gonna press this button. There's lots of different ways to open this door. I love it. Huge handle here. The button, the traditional button to open and close the door is all the way down here. It's a little awkward. I actually have to bend over a little bit to get to it, but the kids are very comfortable in here. The experience hasn't been that much different from our 2013, which wasn't that much different from our 2004 minivan. The usability, the functionality is all here for our family. Tons of space for the kids to crawl in and then get to the back room. I'm gonna grab the camera real quick. As they get in, get real easy for the kids to get back here. Tons of leg room. Uh, behind the second row of seats. They also have USBs back here. We have USBs back here the kids have been using to charge their iPads on the way to our destinations. We also have accessory power up here. We have the DVDs going, not from the system. This is the, the entertainment system from Toyota, but check this out. We plugged in from the HDMI a portable DVD player only costs us 20, 30 bucks from Amazon delivered next day. And it runs out of this USB port right here. That's all it takes to power that DVD player. It's pretty amazing. I'll put it in the description below if you want to check it out. Also have more power accessory right here. And living in Florida, AC is super important. So we have vents not only in the second row here, we have them above the kids' heads in the third row on each side. As we open up the driver's door, we have soft touch here on the top, also here on the armrest with the orange stitching. That's gonna be a theme since it's the XSC model. We have the illuminated Sienna door sill here. It's pretty bright, bright blue. I'm gonna take the camera from you real quick, Cass, because these seats don't have any perforation to them, which will share our impressions, I'm sure, later about their inability to help you breathe in hot conditions. Whew, into the AC now, thankfully. All right. Let's start with the steering wheel, leather wrap steering wheel, I appreciate it, which is a little bit different because the seats we were talking about earlier, those are actually synthetic leather or soft tax is what Toyota calls it. Cabin in here is very comfortable. I like where my arms sit. The seat is a little bit short. We'll talk probably about that later as well. Storage capacity I already showed you actually under here and look at the usable cup holder space. Cass and I really don't like this bridge that much. We'll talk more about that in our driving impressions, but in terms of practicality, we can store a ton of cups here, which is great. We have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on here and it is only wired. So I got to plug it in. There it goes. Pop it there and that helps us get to our destinations. The screen is pretty small here for such a large vehicle. We'll talk more about that later as well. And this XSE grade, we have heated seats, but not ventilated seats. We don't have a heated steering wheel either, but we do have radar cruise control that we'll test later as well as lane keep assist. Now I wanna show you something real quick. With the DVD player, I can't see out of the rear. So you might wanna get that digital rear view mirror as an option on certain grades. We have a sunroof right above us for the front passengers on this particular model. We also have this visor here that allows us to see the kids in the back in the smallest, most slim vision possible. Um, the opening of the door functions. It's a bit picky because you have to hit this button just right in the open. In our van, you just press this button and it's open and closed function built into one, which makes sense to me. But maybe parents in the past have accidentally opened it thinking that they were closing it. I don't know, we've never had that issue before. So we don't really like this setup because it just adds another button that makes it a little convoluted when you're opening and closing the doors. But 
That's just a small gripe, to be honest. This also comes with the JBL sound system, which we haven't been testing because we're playing the kids' Pokemon shows in the back speakers. We're gonna go ahead and get saddled up because we have some driving to Miami to do with the family to test that fuel economy as well, so let's get into it. Underneath this lightweight aluminum hood, we have a two and a half liter four cylinder naturally aspirated connected to two electric motors up front. We have a nickel metal hydride battery under the second row of seats, and that gives us 245 horsepower and 36 miles per gallon. Now you can get this in all wheel drive with an additional electric motor in the back, but let's get back to that road trip so I can tell you more about this van as well as our actual fuel economy with the family loaded up. Merging onto the freeway as we head to a birthday party in Miami, a perfect road trip here in the 2023 Sienna. Today we're gonna to test out its driving characteristics, but also the all important fuel economy. Now when the Sienna went hybrid in this latest redesign, some people were a little confused on why it had less horsepower. And I'm here to say like, maybe it's not quite as quick in a straight line, but getting up to speed there to 70, 75 miles an hour doesn't seem to be struggling at all to keep this speed or getting up to speed. But I will say something right away and something I notice even at lower speeds, and then it could just be on this specific copy of the Sienna, is I have a ton of wind noise. Cass, do you have wind noise coming on your end by your window? You do? This is something we don't have on our 10 year old Sienna and I have an insane amount coming through here and the window is all the way up. Oh, the, the video screen back yeah. there. Yes. It's really crisp and nice. Yeah, the girls commented, we have a big screen. Yeah, they so, loved it. Yeah, they, they appreciate the, the huge screen. Now, we've actually had to retrofit a portable DVD player. Yes, we're old school. We like DVDs. They're just really simple for us to get into the van. Yeah. Turn on the car, press play, and we don't have to worry about casting our phones or having shows pre-downloaded onto our iPads or anything like that. It's so. Like a little simple yeah simple is is best so we do that and it also has a little usb drive so if we wanted to load movies onto a usb drive for example that a little uh dvd player that was like 20 bucks i'll put it in the description if you guys want to check it out it's like the cheapest smallest one i could find and it's been our workhorse for this week for the kiddos and in the car maybe show it later but it looks super discreet so it's like not even like that big yeah it fits right underneath the bridge here and it's out of the way it doesn't make any noise it's great yeah now with modern cars, they also come with modern safety features. So we have radar cruise control on here. Uh, I just set it to about 75 miles an hour and I can control the distance with this button as well. So this is what we're gonna, we have a straight line across Alligator Alley today. So I'm just gonna keep it on cruise control between 70 and 75 miles an hour to give you guys uh, a, a real world test of fuel economy as well. But we also have lane keep assist on here. I don't have a head up display on this model. I think that's on the Platinum, but it does tell me that I'm centered between the lines here. If I keep my hands off the steering wheel, it's actually doing a great job just keeping me straight. It's not hard to do with a straight road, but it's a great safety feature, at least for us here in Florida. Now, something we talked about earlier is that the screen, it is, well, what about your sunglasses in the screen? Okay, well, with my sunglasses, it's a bit polarized. So it's not the easiest, I can't really view it with Clarity. For me, it's really reflective as well. So with not, glasses. yeah, even with the naked eye, like I can see your seatbelt and your dress from, yeah, from funny. the reflection of the screen. Both, it's like, it's easy to see you as it is what's on the screen, <laughs> which is obnoxious. Now, Toyota and Lexus have remedied that with new technology mm -hmm. in their vehicles, but they haven't put it in their Sienna yet, which is a bit disappointing. Oh, yeah, so the newer the newer vehicles with the newer software will have a bigger screen and the screen doesn't have reflections like this does. But it comes with a cost because we don't have these dedicated buttons, which whatever. I'm already, I only use this button to make sure I get to Android Auto as fast as possible, really. Yeah. So, um, and then we have volume control right, right off the edge of the shifter here, which I really appreciate. I like having a traditional shifter here. I just wish... Um, we had more space. We've talked about this when we reviewed this in the past. Yes, this is a cup holder mecca in this area, but I still prefer to have like cup holders that tuck away and yeah. get out of your way. And then you have a, just a much more free flowing interior, more spacious interior. It feels like we're like in a cockpit or something. It's very... Enclosed. Enclosed. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's the word. And the car just slowed itself down very abruptly but very smoothly because this 
roofing van in front of me is very slow, but I put on the blinker and the car starts accelerating itself. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love the radar cruise control in modern modern cars. And Toyota's is really well done. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. And it's just, you know, getting back to the 75 miles an hour and it's not pedaled down all the way. It's just a very moderate amount of speed to get back. Our old Sienna or 2004 that had radar cruise control, that thing was so jerky. Yeah. And those tires are loud. You not only hear the wind noise, you hear cars beside you as well, unfortunately. Yeah, I'll have to look into it, but because the Platinum might actually have some acoustic glass that may, shuts out the additional wind noise and tire noise from passing cars and things like that. So I'll have to look into it because that, if you're doing long road trips, getting those models would be a, a big benefit for the yeah. The isolation of noise. Oh. Kia Sorento <laughs> looking edgy there with the heat. Yeah. That's so funny. yeah. Now, how's the seat comfort for you? Oh, I think it's moderately comfortable. I'm not sinking in so much. I kind of like the sink in just a little bit. Yeah, but we do feel like we're sitting on top of it. I like the way it sits so nice and straight, though, because I don't know. I it's like a, it's a power seat for you over there, yeah, right? It's good. Unfortunately, we don't have memory seats on this model. Uh, that's a that's a bummer for us because we're such drastic height differences. So yes. <laughs> that's a model like unfortunately we would have to get a model that has memory seats. So we just don't have that here on this XSC grade. Always adjusting our seats. In the <laughs> yeah, we're always every time we get a mirror, every single mirror, every the seat, thing. the steering wheel. It's it's a process. So if we're getting ready to pass the toll. We do have great AC in here to be honest. Yeah. Like. It's very comfortable. I just leave it at two bars and I feel like I'm very, very comfortable. In our van, yeah. yeah, we really have to crank that AC system. So that's one, I guess, one of the big improvements here other than just fuel economy is AC and cabin cooling is, is much superior here in this new model. Does it have heated ventilated seats? This has heated seats. You can get ventilated seats probably on the Platinum and maybe uh, the limited grade as well. The I am, ventilated I'm seats. sticking to these yeah. uh, soft tech seats. Like yeah. I'm, you know, it's it's summer. It's going to be hot in here, even if you have AC. It's 92 degrees outside. And speaking of the seat, I know you talk about your seat comfort. I'm honestly not that comfortable in here at six oh. feet one. The seat, well, I'm sticking to it. So having like, I think I'd be more comfortable actually in a cloth seat. Yeah. Um, and the seat's also small for me. Yeah. Like I feel like my legs are way too long. The cushion ends about mid thigh for me. It looks and like I'm not baby. that tall. Like. I'm six foot one is not that tall. Like, right. so these seats just feel too small and too sticky for me in the summer. Yeah. But for, for short trips, it's not a big deal. But for long trips, it's not that comfy, I'll say. Oh, this Volvo is old. The Volvo, Do yeah. They, took, have, they uh... took forever at the toll. Oh, it's a oh. young woman. Oh, she, she's we just... thought she was old, but she's young on her phone, not she's paying attention, going straight for the barrier up here. Attention. Um, Oh, it's just that one vehicle. She didn't get over. No, because she's a she, jerk. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, she held up the pole. She doesn't get over for uh, people pulled over on the side of the road. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we do a blind spot modern here, which is great. Yep, love them. Love that feature. What's a, what's the thing that our van's missing that... Blind spot monitors? Well, oh, that's, yes, parking that. assist. Parking assist, yeah. So like the... My favorite. The beeps. I love the beeps. No, we don't have a 360 camera on here, but... <gasps> oh. It's, it's available on higher models. Okay. It's totally unnecessary because you have the radar sensors. Okay, it's it tells enough? you when you're getting, in my opinion, it's enough. Okay, okay. I guess it's better because it's harder for me to look, look at a screen and with the 3D because it makes me a little nauseous with like... Sure. You know, Whatever so I guess different. that's, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I like it, don't get me wrong. But yeah, front and rear parking sensors are an absolute must yep. in a vehicle this size. And we were driving around Target picking up birthday presents uh, yeah. right before we started recording. <laughs> and a huge suburban park next to us. And like this vehicle you would think would have an issue getting out of it. Not so like able able to really cut it close yeah. because it has a nice tight turning radius. So that I was impressive. impressed with yeah, yeah its parking characteristics as well. Just got into Miami. There's 112 miles on the clock now. The fuel gauge is still saying over the full line and it says that we're getting 32.8 miles per gallon, but we'll fill up at the end of our trip to see how that compares to actual fuel economy. And city driving now, like the battery's topped off just coming down from speed. 
and uh, yeah, it, it prefers to be in fully electric mode, just like most Toyota hybrids until you hit a certain speed and then it kicks in the gasoline engine, which is kind of rough, it is kind of loud, and we're in Miami, so immediately we hear our first horn, big up figure. But yeah, just cruising here around 35 miles an hour, it's in fully electric mode, super smooth, very quiet. We do feel the suspension on the definitely on the firmer end in this XSE trim, but luckily the roads here are really, really nice, so it's been a good ride quality overall. Like that time it got up to about 20 miles an hour before the gasoline engine kicked in, which is pretty cool. I like the brake feel in the new Siennas. It's, uh, even though it's a hybrid, I feel like it has a great progression to it, a good heft to it. And the steering in this XSE is definitely on the tighter end, which I really, really like. We got back from Miami yesterday. We just filled it up today though and i took it about 232 miles and i put in a little over six gallons so it told me 37 miles per gallon which i wasn't expecting because the little digital reader said 33 miles per gallon which i thought would be pretty accurate but no when i actually filled it up it said i got more fuel economy 37 miles per gallon than i was expecting if you had like an xle with smaller wheels you might actually even be able to get more than 37 miles per gallon yeah i can't <laughs> believe it yeah our van gets 18 miles per gallon yeah. so that's just a pretty much mind-blowing i was not mm -hmm. expecting that typically toyota's little digital gauges are are over optimistic and it actually was under optimistic at this point so pretty cool with an 18 gallon fuel tank in here getting 37 miles per gallon your theoretical range would be 666 miles on a single tank of gas guys we we had it loaded up not to the max like but nearly every seat was full in here with kids yeah like that is just mind-blowing i still can't get over that i know it's pretty impressive yeah our our van is like 300 you know if yeah. you're lucky so maybe we just have to get this car. We might, might have to get it. Yeah. Maybe they'll limit it because the limited gives us acoustic glass, which will remove most of that wind noise you were getting yesterday. Yeah. So we're uh, we. It's been an absolute pleasure driving it this week. You guys saw how impressive the technology was, as well as the fuel economy. Mm -hmm. And for a big family, there's nothing better than a minivan. No matter how many crossovers we've tested, with how many little kids we have, there's just still nothing that can beat a minivan. It's easier let alone one that gets 37 miles per gallon yeah and again our kids are like seven and under so yeah it's, maybe if you have older kids they don't mind crawling over but sure the younger kids it's so much easier yeah super easy this is a cheat code for families the sienna minivan with the hybrid fuel economy it's mm -hmm. it's incredible so we're going to there thank you toyota for sending this yeah. Uh, for us uh, this week for a little road trip action and uh, yeah I mean just give us one to replace for 2013 which yeah. we just got and totally we love that van we yeah. love that van the but limited please with ventilated seats yeah we need the limited <laughs> ventilated seats with acoustic glass and we're going to be laughing our way to the fuel pump which will be very rarely so yeah. all right thanks Cass thanks kids for being amazing and we'll catch you guys in the next one peace mm -hmm.